we introduced a simple model from statistical mechanics called the IZ model, but there's nothing quantum happening in it. So we are interested in quantum computers and their uh, relationship to quantum many body systems. So we actually have to look at a quantum many body system. To get their first, we write our classical IZ model in a more quantum mechanical form. So in what we introduced yesterday uh, in the previous video was this Hamiltonian of binary variables. So we know that in quantum mechanics, we have states and operators acting on these states. So let's look at a particular operator that could act on, say, a qubit. So I define uh, this sigma z operator, which is called a Pauli matrix. It's the z Pauli matrix. It has this very simple form. And when you apply this operator on the zero cat, you actually get the zero cat. It doesn't do anything to it. Or you can think of it as adding a plus one multiplier to it. And if you apply it to the one cat, then the one cat picks up a sign, a minus sign. So basically, it applies minus 1 to it. So by applying this operator on these tier 2 basis states, you can reproduce the effect of getting plus 1 or minus 1 as, an, as a probability amplitude uh, before the, the actual uh, state. So the quantum mechanical form of the classicalizing model is exactly the same as what we have seen, except that we have operators here. So now all of these are sigma z operators acting on a particular qubit. But since this is now a large operator, what we want to do is the calculate the expectation value of this because we are interested in the energy of this system and not, not an operator. And when we are talking about measurements, uh, we saw that if, you, if we sandwich uh, the measurement operator with the bra from the left and the cat from the right, then we get a scalar value out of it. And we are doing the exact same thing here. So the energy or the expectation value of the system is exactly this. So this can be calculated very easily. This Hamiltonian is commuting, which means that every single one of these matrices commutes with one another. Now, when you have a commuting Hamiltonian, that's actually not very interesting from a quantum mechanical perspective. These correspond to classical systems. To have any quantum mechanical effect, we have to add something more. And this is where the transverse realizing model becomes interesting. Because what we are adding is one more type of interaction, a sigma x interaction, a transverse field interaction. So it's defined as this, and if you multiply sigma x by sigma z, or the other way around, you see that the result does not correspond, because here you have minus 1, here you have plus 1, and here you have minus 1, and here you have plus 1. So it matters in which order you use these two operators. In other words, if you add the sigma x to the Hamiltonian, then your Hamiltonian will no longer commute. So let's do that. So now we know that this is the classicalizing model written in a different form. And we can add this transverse field with, say, some GI coefficients as such. So on each side, this transverse field would act. So what does this mean that you have a transverse field? So to understand this, we have to look at the eigenvectors of the individual operators. Because the, the eigenvalue of this operator will correspond to the energy. So the, the lowest eigenvalue will correspond to the, to the lowest energy for that particular operator in that site. So for the sigma z, it's just 0 and 1. So it's you know, plus 1 or minus 1, exact same thing as the classicalizing model. And if you look at the eigenvectors of sigma x, it's one of the two states of the equal superposition. In other words, when you try to minimize the energy of the system, this term tries to push it into a superposition, whereas the sigma z interactions are trying to be deterministically either 0 or 1. So this is where you get this quantum effect by pushing it towards a superposition and having this non-commuting term.